Hello again, everybody. This is Derek, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to continue on with our store news updates. Uh, I want to say Happy New Year. It's now 2024, uh, and uh, I've got a lot of things planned for this year, and I don't even know what they are. So <laughs> we're going to do a lot of, we got some commissions we still have to do. We have some, uh, I need to, well, it's the first, so I need to do a big inventory of my store, uh, you know, for taxes and all that. But uh, other than that, um, I'm, I'm really focusing on my, uh, my marshals and generals. So let's go ahead and get started in today's update. All right, uh, now if you've never been to any of these updates, what we talk about is usually what I'm working on, what I've finished, uh, what kind of product I've got in, what kind of supplies I've gotten in, and then I touch a little bit on the news. Okay, um, and it, the news that really pertains or relates to the store. All right, and wait, I have an order in... The only order I have in right now is for uh, Old Glory. Uh, they have a sale right now on their website uh, for armies. So if you want to buy a $200 army, I think they've got like 10 or 15% off or something like that. So you should check that out if you're interested in buying a whole starter army. Um, otherwise, you can shop through me because I sell individual unit packs. Um, so yeah, there's that. Okay, I'm sorry, that was part of the news. Now let's talk about what I've finished. Okay, so one of the things I finished was my French, my 28 millimeter French Napoleonic commission. Uh, I've, I've already finished that and I've already shipped that out. It's already on the way to my customer. Um, that was fun to do, but it was just time consuming because of my health issues that I had over the last month or so. Uh, but now I'm up to speed and I am cranking stuff out. So my next project, the one I'm going to be working on, uh, is the Polish Commission, which I think is three battalions of Polish. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do those next. Those are all Perry miniatures, so that should be fun to paint. It should be e I, I, I still have to wash them and prep them for their... Uh, priming so uh, that's the stage I am on with them um, all right so that's what I finished and that's partially what I'm working on another thing that I'm working on is rebasing my uh, Napoleon my 15 Napoleonics to my marshals and generals basing scheme right so I'm putting the artillery pieces on 40 by 40s I'm basically very it's very similar to almost identical to Meg uh, or you know field of glory um, I'm putting my artillery on 40 millimeter bases uh, and but when I rebased these to their 40 millimeter squares um, something something awoke inside me no I I realized that there's a little bit more room, of course, because it's a larger base, but it felt more comfortable. Like putting the miniatures next to the guns, uh, I didn't feel like I was cramming everything into a smaller base. So I really like I, I really like that that I'm not um, cramming. You know, everybody's standing there like this. You know. They, they feel a little bit more like animated. Um, same thing with the cavalry. Uh, by, by taking six bases of two figures um, and changing it to four bases of three figures, it actually brings it into line closer to 100 men per base right so this could easily be a 400 man unit 
Um, and I'm kind of wanting to do that. I want to have each base represent approximately 100 fighters, right? So 100 cavalry, 100 infantry. Not necessarily the guns. The guns are representing about four guns with their crew. So two guns would be a battery. That's what you would normally see on the table is two guns like that. But there are some situations like a Dutch-Belgian gun at Quatre Bras was only a half battery. So you would only see one gun. Because that's, guess what? Half of a battery. And then there are some situations, very rare, that you would see a large battery. Uh, and I'll do three bases for that. And that fits perfectly with, uh, like, if I was doing points in Meg and I was buying armies, um, that fits in perfectly because almost all of the, uh, like, artillery that you can buy, you can buy one, two, or three bases. Uh, same thing with Cav. Um, I'm doing four or six uh, basis of calf, right? And that's exactly what it is in the army. Uh, and now the infantry uh, are, you know, it's on my 20 by 40s, or I should say 40 by 20s, and six bases would represent approximately 600 men, which is what a battalion would be. Um, now my buildings i've got a number of buildings they are going to be 10 millimeter buildings because i think they fit better on my uh on my neighborhood stands uh, which is that's what this is is a neighborhood uh, or a town sector and uh it also allows even though these are 15s and that's 10 millimeter they don't look too out of place right but remember, um, the figures are not to the ground scale. The ground scale, you're looking at the frontage of this unit here. It's approximately 80 yards. So uh, one inch being about 50 yards. So if this is a three inch, it's actually a four inch, with that being a four inch base, that would be... 200 yards you know so that building would not be you know at that big they, there should be a lot of little itty bitty buildings but i wanted it to look a little a little closer to the figure scale this figure scale is not ground scale okay which is also not unit scale there's a lot of different scales to be considered um and my skirmish unit, which really only have uh, one that I know of, it's the, uh, not the Jaegers. Yeah, that's the field Jaegers. It's not these guys. They're, they should be based on those type of figures. But this is a NASA Jaegers of some kind. I don't remember. But they had approximately two companies, and each one of these stands represents a company, and they always fought as skirmish. They were always uh, deployed as skirmishers. So I'm going to rebase those onto 40 by 40s. Uh, also, uh, something I'm working on is rebasing my uh, limbers, but I'm also rebasing my cavalry, my infantry, and all that. And that's going to that's going to kind of take my time over the next three months to really work on that, to get that taken care of. But I, I found, I invented a new way to mount my limbers to the base. Um, you might not be able to see this. I'm not going to zoom in. But I made a paper clip. Uh, there we go. So I bent this paper clip in such a way that it could sit on the horses and allow the limbers to 
be elevated in a way where they wouldn't just fall to the ground. Um, now I could probably tie some string, like thread, rope in there to kind of really give it a, a nice look to it, but I'm not in any hurry to do that. And these are also being mounted on 40 by 80, so that's the same size as two guns, which is pretty nice because uh, in my old basing style, 80 millimeters was the length, uh, this is my old basing style, was the same length as uh, the old basing style add to the new basing style. So there's no change in ground scale. And the artillery was also 30 millimeters in the front, but they were 40 millimeters deep. So there was no change in the ground scale there either. So by putting uh, a limber and two artillery pieces, and you take a look at this full length right here, which is eight, no, 16 millimeters, right? Eight and eight, 16 millimeters. Um, that equates out to about 312, 320 yards, right? And if you go and look at official documents of the period and you take an eight battery or eight gun battery with its limbers uh, on a road, it did stretch out a long distance, about 320 yards. So this works out perfect. And the width, um, it is just a little bit wider than it probably should be, but it feels better. Plus, all my roads are 40 millimeters wide, the ones that I've made. And any roads I'm making in the future are all going to be 40 millimeters. So all these bases will fit on them. Uh, now, my generals, I already have based on 40 millimeter uh, circles, uh, which you can base them on circles or squares. That's up to the player. But I prefer to do circles because it shows where your commander is real easily. Like when you glance down, you can tell that this is a commander and not a unit, right? Um, and then the brigade commander being on one mounted figure on a 30 millimeter circle, uh, it's just a marker. He is the uh, focal point of your brigade. So when you have this guy out, your brigade should be deployed around him or directly in front of him or whatever within a certain number of inches, which I'll have to work out during uh, my dev blogs, which I've started uh, today. I have a dev blog. I'm going to call it number one, even though it's probably not officially number one, but it's, I mean, it's not actually number one, but I'm going to officially call it number one. Uh, and I'm going to change, right now I've got it listed as a Wargaming in Miniature uh, Wargaming Weekly video, but it's going to be a dev blog where it, uh, <clears throat> where it's going to, um, I'm going to spend a couple hours each time I do one of those videos live, working out the numbers, figuring out which numbers, what modifiers, which dice, how many inches, any kind of, any kind of uh, crunching of the, the bits of the, of the rules will be done during my dev blog. And that will be, and you can possibly jo join in and put some, put some two cents in there as well. Uh, share your thoughts. And um, we had a guy today uh, looked at Wargaming in miniature uh, <clears throat> and saw me live and he jumped on there and he thought that it was Wargaming the company that makes World of Tanks. Because that is, that's what their name is, Wargaming. But, uh, no, this is Wargaming in miniature. So, that was crazy. Um, 
Okay, so that's what those guys are. So the only reason why I have these here is because I was talking about these earlier during my dev blog. But <clears throat> let's get back to the store news, right? We got one, what did I finish? French commission, done, out the door. Two, what am I working on? Well, I'm working on my marshals and generals rules. I'm working on rebasing my figures, and I'm preparing to work on those Polish infantry. So that's what I'm working on. Plus videos and all, all I work on a lot of different things, but, but that's really what I'm focusing on right now. What kind of supplies have I gotten in? Well, let me think. Have I gotten in any supplies at all? Um, glue, paint, tape, boxes, bubble wrap. Oh, okay. I did get something. Uh, I didn't purchase it. It was a this gift but it is basically it is basically uh supply not supplies this would be supplies yeah it's supplies okay well, let me open this up and kind of show you what it is I even have a little belt loop if i wanted to carry it along with me for whatever reason Plus, I've got a ring here if I want to hang it on the wall. Pretty cool bag, actually. Um, got a little Velcro here. Guess if I wanted to fold this bag in half, I could do that as well. Plus, there's another piece of Velcro here. Okay. Brush set. Beautiful. Um, these brushes, I'm going to have to take them out and take a look at them. It even comes with a little scalpel and a little uh, spatula that I, I would have used when I was doing my lakes. This would have been a really good item to have. And um, anytime I'm doing any kind of large, like when I'm getting ready to do, like my, my coastline would have been good to use. And when I'm doing my roads, that's going to be good. Okay, now you'll notice that the majority of these brushes are big brushes. These are, these are going to be great for like tank washes and painting tanks and big items. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to use that brush. But uh, some of these smaller brushes I might actually use during figure painting. Um, but a lot of these would be great for applying washes and, uh, and painting tanks and stuff like that. Cause they're soft bristles. I'm very happy with, I I'm actually pretty happy with these. Uh, and you can see the, you can see the numbers on these brushes, right? When you get down to the twos and ones, that's actually good for figures. I don't know. This one just, it's super long necked. No. But either way, comes in a great case. So that's really the only supplies that I've got in was those brushes. Um, everything else, uh, I've just basically just been sitting on what I already have. Uh, now when it comes to, what's the last thing I said, product? Okay, I've got an, uh, some product. Um, I have gone through my uh, miniatures and I think I'm some of the like older D&D models or what have you. I think I'm going to go through. Uh, I have a board game called Descent and uh, it comes with a bunch of models uh, and I and I painted almost every one of them. And uh, Descent was, I've had it for a bunch of years, 10 years, something like that. 
Um, we only played it when it first came out, when I first got it. Uh, we haven't played it since. So I think I, I might just sell those figures. I mean, they're painted and everything. Or I might put them back in the Descent box and sell the whole Descent box. I don't know. I had all the expansions and everything. Uh, okay, so product. Yeah, like I said, the only product that I've got coming in is some Old Glory 15s. Uh, they should be coming in any day now. Other than that, I don't have any other product. Now, I've been thinking about ordering some more uh, Rubicon because that sells very well. 28 millimeter tanks for Rubicon. Uh, but I don't know if I want to do that. I probably... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I kind of want to order some, some models from V and V, but we'll have to see. Right now, I just don't have any orders in. I'm putting it. Off. Oh, that's right, Victrix. I really got to order some Victrix. I'm getting low on my Victrix. Uh, I got an order in a couple of months ago, and now it's almost all gone. So. Uh, I need to probably put an order in for this. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, my Romans from my my Roman um, Republican Roman army that I was planning on working on. I'm kind of putting on the back burner while I work on these Napoleonic figures. Uh, I'm not really painting any Napoleonic figures. I've decided I'm not really gonna paint them because I've got a lot of figures that need to be rebased. So I wanna rebase everything before I start painting new units. Um, but if I do paint a new unit, I'll be able to just immediately base it properly. So, uh, because I've pretty much locked down how I'm gonna do uh, basing. Uh, also, uh, in those in that dev blog, we worked on in, in dev blog number one, we worked on uh, shooting and combat, and I think I have my shooting locked in, and I think I have my combat locked in, breakthroughs and everything. So, uh, but I might not. I'll have to play test it. But before I can really play test it, I need to figure out. Uh, movement distances, uh, command and control, the order system, uh, and I don't think I'm going to use the order system from Meg. Uh, I, I think I'm going to use a PIP system, which is going to give you uh, a number of actions, something. I don't know. I'm going to do it. Uh, I still have to think about my 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 command. Uh, morale is based on the chit system, where you draw chits when you get a destroyed unit, like battle group. And then when you reach your breaking point, then your army breaks. Um, and unit stats. I got to go through my units, and when you maybe I'll take one nation at a time maybe not maybe i'll do all the nations all at once but mostly i'll be doing the ones for quattro bra and waterloo so you'll have a lot of the allied units like brunswick prussian nasa dutch belgian hanover uh british uh french french guard you know and then we'll get in there and Figure out, um, figure out what they're, you know, jot down the different types of units. That's what I need to do first. And then start assigning uh, values to them. Uh, but mostly, every unit is going to be exactly the same. Mostly, right? So, like I'm thinking, a French line unit 
and a Nassau line unit and a Brunswick line unit and a Prussian line unit is all going to be the same, right? They're all going to have the same stats. So I don't know how I'm going to make them unique, right? Um, and that's, or should they even bother? You know, because I look at black powder and pretty much every unit in black powder is exactly the same. Uh, but they give you some national nationality differences. Like they give the British a first fire option. They give the French a bonus when they're in column. Uh, they give... Um, I don't think they give... Maybe they give Prussians something when they're in line or something like that. And I, I think those are... I think those are artificial, right? Those are just ways to differentiate them on the table, which I don't think it needs to be that way. I think that a British line going up against a French line should be pretty fair. Should be exact. They should have the exact same modifiers and stuff like that. But now, special characteristics like a cuirassier versus a lancer versus a chasseur uh, versus maybe a household cavalry. Uh, certain things they might have certain types of modifiers like expert fighters or great skirmishers or. Something like that. I'll probably make up something. Um, but yeah, that's part of my Marshals and Generals dev blog. We got the melee and the shooting modifiers and the die rolls. We got that down. Now, I still have to tweak it with the unit differences. But other than that, pretty straightforward. Um, command and control is going to be a big... That's going to be the big... The big thing and, and oh yeah uh, I made a decision that I'm not using base wits when it comes to shooting and movement and stuff like that I'm using inches my guys are going to be moving inches which uh, will make for some nuance because base wits are like this big and inches are like this big so if I say two inches, it's almost a full base width. Actually, two inches is more than a base width. But because it's like 20 millimeters is half a base width. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this store news update. Uh, some other updates. I have some emails that I got that I wanted to share. Uh, oh, yeah, my sale on eBay. Uh, I have a sale. It's going on till the end of the week, right? That's the end of the sales for 2023. Uh, end of this week. When and if I start a new sale, I'll let you know. But right now, I so if you want to know about any new sales, be sure to go to my eBay store and subscribe or follow me there. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's subscribe. Maybe it's follow saved me as a seller or something i don't remember but you basically go there and uh that way when i send out newsletters because i do every month i send out a newsletter letting people know what's going on with my store you'll be updated and you'll get like whatever the new sale is um so be sure to do that and yeah that's where we're at polish all right. Thank you for coming out and checking out this store news update, and I'll catch you in the next one.